Hey what's up guys then by for simple snippets and welcome back to another video tutorial on digital electronics boolean algebra and logic gates so in this video tutorial we are going to be discussing the concept and the working of clocked sr flip flop now in the previous couple of video tutorials we've already discussed the concept of clock and the different triggering methodologies so if you have missed that video you can check it out and we've also discussed the simple sr flip flop so in this video tutorial we are going to be discussing the clocked version of sr flip flop so what we are going to do is we are going to understand the circuit diagram the block diagram and we are going to construct the truth table by taking the five different cases in this case okay so let's get started with the circuit diagram now if you've already seen the sr flip flop video this part is the sr flip flop and this part with the two extra nand gates and one clock input is the way we implement a clock mechanism with this basic sr flip flop so what we are doing is we are just adding two nand gates and we are giving an input of clock over here and then this acts as a control mechanism so we already know that clock is used to synchronize and control the flip flop so that the output does not change when the clock is off and we control the output so that we do not get any undesirable output so this is the block diagram you can see there is only one change that is we have one more input that is clk clk stands for clock which is this input and the rest remains the same now what we'll do is we'll construct the truth table by different cases by taking different cases and understanding how it works so for reference i have already constructed a nand gate truth table and i have also have a video tutorial specially for nand gate because it is a universal gate so you can check that video as well later on so anyways we'll start off with the different cases and by different cases we are just going to take the different input scenarios so let's take case 1 in that case we are going to assume clock signal to be 0 so clk is equal to 0 so i'm just going to write it down in the truth table as well so we'll construct it side by side now what happens when the clock is 0 So the first and second NAND gate get zero zero, right? Okay. Let's see the NAND gate truth table. So whenever there is a zero in any of the input of a NAND gate, the output is always going to be one. So you can see these first three cases. We have one zero at least, and that's why the output is one because the output of NAND gate is going to be zero dot something. So this something is going to be that S or R over here zero dot something. The whole complement, right? So zero dot anything is going to give you zero, and the complement is always going to give you one. so irrespective of what snr is the output here in both the cases of snr when clock is 0 is always going to be 1 so when clock is 0 irrespective of what snr is the output of these first two nand gates is always going to be 1 so understood till here right so which means snr is don't care condition when clock is 0 now we still have to input these values in the next two nand gates to get the output right so we've got 1 over here and we've got 1 over here Now this SR flip flop we'll have to assume that output of Q equals to one or zero because when the input is one and one for both the NAND gates of the SR flip flop it usually acts as a memory latch right so we've seen that in the basic SR flip flop so it has to take the previous state output so let's assume Q equals to one and if we get one and one over here for this one and one NAND gate the output is going to be zero so Q bar is going to be zero. so this q bar is fed back again to the first upper nand gate so we get zero over here so one and zero will give you output as one again and again you can say that this one gets fed back over here then you get zero again which means that the previous state is maintained over here so if q would have been zero then q bar would have been one because it will always be complement to each other and even then it would have maintained the st state that is zero and one so that's how it works when clock is zero which means that it works as a memory latch and it gives us previous state So when clock is zero, you can say that S is equal to a don't care condition, R is equal to again don't care condition, and output Q n is equal to Q n minus one, which is the previous state, and Q bar n is equal to Q bar n minus one, which is again the previous state. So let me just fill it out over here. So Q n minus one and Q bar n minus one. So this is where we have control on this circuit. So this is one extra step, or you can say one extra combination, because we've included clock over here. Now rest four are going to act as the basic SR flip flop, and we'll see those as well. But let's come back to this step again. So by making clock zero, we are having a control on the flip flop that is on these two NAND gates. Because when clock is zero, irrespective of what SNR is, the output is always going to be previous state. So that's what we proved over here, right? Which means that if by chance or by mistake S becomes one or zero or R becomes one or zero, because they can be only one and zero, right? They can only switch between the these two values because it is a digital circuit which is taking a binary input. So if by mistake it gets flipped also, even then the output is always going to be the previous state because clock is zero. So this is how we have control over the 
SR flip flop using this clock and it turns on only when we want it to be on. So that time we make the clock as one. So let's see what happens when the clock is turned on and when the clock is one. So let me just first erase this all out. Okay, so now let's see case two. In this case, we are going to say clock equals to one. So let's make this one, which means that the first two NAND gates get one. And now when the clock is one, the output of these two NAND gates depend upon S and R. So this means that we have enabled the entire circuit using clock equals to one in this case. So depending upon what the input of S and R is, now the flip flop will switch between the values. So let's assume S equals to one or let's assume S equals to zero in this case and R equals to one. So we'll take S equals to zero and R equals to one. So we've said clock is one. We are saying S equals to zero and R equals to one. Okay. So the output of this NAND gate 0.1, that is this case is going to be one over here. So we have one coming from this NAND gate, right? For this NAND gate, we have one and one. So the output is going to be zero. Now coming to the NAND gates of the flip flop, that is the actual SR flip flop. You can see the lower NAND gate is having a one input as zero, which means that output is always going to be one because if according to the NAND gate through table, if any of the input is zero, the output is always high. You can see the first three cases, right? So you can say Q bar is equal to one. Now this Q bar is fed back to the upper NAND gate. So one and one will give you Q equals to zero because it is this case. So what we got as output over here is zero and one. And this is exactly the reset state. Okay, so this was case number two. Let's see case number three. So in case number three, we are again keeping the clock as one. So clock as one, but we are switching the SR values. So we're going to say S is equal to one and R is equal to zero, which is actually the set state. Okay, so this is one and zero and let's see how the circuit works. Now, since the clock is one, which means both the first NAND gates get one and they are activated now. So the output depends upon these S and R values. So S we've assumed as one and R we've assumed as zero. So when the input gets one and one, the output is zero, right? So we get zero over here from this upper NAND gate. Similarly, when the input is one and zero, the output is always going to be one. So we get one to the lower NAND gate of the SR flip flop. Now for the upper flip flop, when the input is zero, the output is always going to be one. So Q equals to one. This one is going to be fed back to the lower NAND gate of the SR flip flop. So one and one will give you zero. Q bar will be zero. So the output here is one and zero. And this is exactly the set state. Okay. So now let's move ahead and see case number four, wherein we'll consider clock as one and S equals to zero and R equals to zero. So let's see what happens in this case. So S equals to zero and R equals to zero. So since input is zero and one, that is this case, the output is going to be one for the first NAND gate of the clock circuit. Again, for this also, we have one and zero. So this case one and zero output is going to be one for the lower NAND gate. Now, when we have input as one and one for the both SR flip flop gates, that is the NAND gates, we have to consider the previous state. So here the output is dependent upon the second input for both the NAND gates. So first we have to assume, let's say Q is going to be one over here. Then this one is fed back to the first NAND gate. So one and one will give you Q bar equals to zero. This Q bar is fed back again over here, zero. Now one and zero is going to give you zero complement, which is equal to one again. So you're getting back one again. And if you feedback this one over here again, you'll get zero back again, which means that it is maintaining the previous state. So if Q was zero, Q bar would have been one and then it would have been latched on to that state. So this case four is basically the memory state or it is also known as latched or previous state. So your clock is one, the inputs are zero and zero and the output is again going to be Q n minus one and Q bar n minus one. Okay, so this was case number four. Let's see case number five, which is the last case. So in case number five, we are going to assume clock as one again. The inputs are going to be one and one. And let's see what output QN and Q bar gets. So it is case five where clock is equal to one, S equals to one and R equals to one. So let's see what this gives us. So we are keeping S as one and R as one. So when both the inputs are one and one, so clock is also one, right? So for the first and second NAND gate of the clock circuit, the output is always going to be zero and zero over here as well. So when we have both zeros, so let's say for first NAND gate of the SR flip flop, the output is going to be high, right? Because one of the input of this NAND gate is zero. The output is going to be one. Similarly, for the lower NAND gate also, we have one input, which is zero. So again, the Q bar is also going to be one. So now this is contradicting, right? Because Q cannot be equal to Q bar. So this is basically the race condition. So this is not allowed because if Q is one, Q bar has to be zero. So this gives us the race condition over here. 
so when clock is one and s and r is also one at that time we get a race condition which is an undesirable output so this is the race condition or undesirable output okay so this is something that we have to avoid but now if you see that just because we've added this extra clock over here you can see right this is an extra state which was not there when we saw the sr flip flop without the clock right so let's say the s and r are one and one again and this should have given us a race condition, right? But if S and R are one and one and the clock is zero, then the entire circuit will be disabled, right? So this race condition will never come into picture because clock is zero. And if clock is zero, the output is always going to be one and one. So when output is one and one for these two NAND gates and input as one and one for the SR flip-flop NAND gates, the resulting final output will always be the previous state that is QN minus one. So irrespective of what S and R are, if the clock is zero, the output is always going to be previous state. So this race condition can be avoided using the clock. So this is where clock helps us in proper synchronization and gives us a more control over the output. So that's it for this video guys. I hope you understood how we can synchronize and control the output of the SR flip-flop using the clocked SR flip-flop and the mechanism of clock. So if you like this video, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends. And if you haven't yet subscribed to this channel, make sure you subscribe to this channel because there are a lot of video tutorials coming up and you'll get notified whenever I upload a new video. So I'll talk to you guys in the next video tutorial. Peace.